we're going to be looking at radionuclide imaging. And this involves administering into the body, that means ingesting or injecting, a medical tracer, which is a gamma-emitting radioactive substance. The tracer then travels through the body, emitting its radiation. And so its path in the body can be traced by detecting the radiation outside of the body using gamma cameras. And a computer is used to construct an image of the distribution of the tracer inside the body. This image is showing you the buildup of the radioactive isotope in certain areas in the body where there is bone cancer. The most commonly used radioactive nuclide is technetium 99M. It only emits gamma radiation, which has a low ionizing power, so it's safer for the patient and it can penetrate out of the body in order to be detected. Technetium 99M does not emit alpha and beta radiation which is more ionising and so can cause more damage to the patient and will also not penetrate out of the body and so will not be detected outside. Technetium 99M also has a short half-life of six hours which is long enough to carry out the investigation but not long enough that it will remain in the body for a long time. It will decay quickly. And technetium 99M can be used to assess the function of organs, for example, the heart, liver, and kidneys, and hence diagnose any diseases related to the organs. And this image is showing you the uptake of technetium 99M in the right kidney, but you can see there's no uptake in the left kidney area. So this is showing you that the patient has no left kidney. The gamma camera detects the gamma radiation penetrating out of the patient. And it has four main components. The first component is the collimator and this defines exactly where the gamma rays came from inside the body. And the collimator is made up of long, thin, parallel lead tubes. And between the gaps of the tubes, the gamma rays can travel through. So only the rays parallel to the lead tubes can pass through the collimator. Any gamma rays that are meeting the lead tubes at an angle will be absorbed. The scintillator then converts each gamma photon into thousands of light photons. And that's because the gamma photon has a much greater energy than visible light photon. The light photons are then sent to a photomultiplier tube which converts the light into amplified electrical pulses. And it's these electrical pulses that are sent to a computer where they're analysed and processed in order to form the image. Another form of radionuclide imaging is positron emission tomography, or PET for short. But in this case, the radionuclide emits positrons. That is, it's a beta positive emitter. And an example would be fluorine 18. The positrons that are emitted will annihilate with any electrons that are present 
that means that they will completely destroy each other and two identical gamma photons will be produced and they will travel in opposite directions in order to conserve momentum. This process is an example of the conversion of mass of the positron and the electron into energy, which is the gamma photons, via Einstein's mass energy equation. In a PET scanner, the patient is surrounded by a ring of gamma detectors. And these detectors detect the pair of gamma ray photons that are coming from inside the patient and are traveling in opposite directions. The difference in time in which the gamma ray photons arrive at the detectors is measured. And from the delay time, the position where the gamma rays originated from inside the patient can be determined. So the gamma photon that arrives first at the detector will have travelled a shorter distance compared to its oppositely travelling gamma photon. And if you use the speed of the gamma radiation inside the patient and multiply it by the delay time, you will determine the additional distance the oppositely moving gamma photon has travelled and hence from this you can determine where the two gamma ray photons originated inside the body. And a computer is needed to process all this data in order to construct an image of the distribution of the radionuclide inside the patient. And PET scan can be used to monitor brain activity during certain tasks and you can then also compare brain activity for a normal healthy person and someone suffering from dementia.